It's the 27th birthday of Queen Elizabeth I. She has held the English crown for just two years. She has her supporters, but there are still many who question the idea of a woman holding a position of such power. Whispers plague Elizabeth because to the concern of both the country and her court, she remains unmarried. There are nothing but ambassadors, letters, council memos, pleas from parliament, marry, secure the succession, produce an heir. The queen's inner circle, the Privy Council, is made up of 19 men, and at the forefront is William Cecil, the queen's most trusted advisor. Cecil, as Secretary of State, is her, you know, the closest of all, the most important, the man who makes all the wheels turn. But much to his annoyance, another man has the Queen's ear, and some say her heart, Robert Dudley. Elizabeth and Dudley are so close, there are rumors it has gone beyond a friendship. He's the classic, tall, dark, and handsome. His enemies called him the gypsy because of his swarthy looks. And it's only six months after her accession that ambassadors are already saying that the Queen visits Robert Dudley night and day in his chamber. But Elizabeth will never be able to marry Dudley because of one rather inconvenient fact. He's already married. It would be seen as a great scandal if Robert Dudley divorced his wife Amy to marry the Queen. Since Elizabeth took the throne, Dudley hardly sees his wife living at the palace with the Queen instead. What's perhaps unusual about Robert Dudley and Amy is that they don't really have a settled home together. So that from the time Elizabeth comes to the throne, Amy's kind of moving from one house to another. She's living, you know, sort of someone's house in Warwickshire and then some months before her death, she comes to Cumnor Place, five miles outside Oxford, and that's where she meets her death. On the 8th of September, 1560, Amy's lifeless body is found at the foot of a staircase in Cumnor Palace. Given the convenience of Amy's death for both Elizabeth and Robert Dudley, suspicions are roused and rumors fly. And William Cecil immediately took advantage of the situation and started spreading rumors about Dudley and the Queen. He needed to strike while the iron was hot. If he handled it right, Cecil could blacken Dudley's name for good.